Hi everybody, happy Monday from Eat, Walk, Learn. I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Steve. And we are actually ending a cruise. We just crossed over from Fort Lauderdale. We're cruising into Barcelona in the morning. But before we start talking about Europe, we want to talk about Mexico. We just spent the last four months, four months in, in Mexico. Mexico and had an absolute fabulous time. And we did an actual Eat, Walk, Learn blog post, which I'm going to post below, that has all this information written out. So if you are someone that needs to read everything we're about to talk about, go take a look at that blog post. And what we do in the blog post is we really evaluate whether we would live, visit, or get out of town as fast as we could out of the eight places that we visited. Now, six of them we visited on this particular trip, and two we have visited else to, at, at another time in Mexico, but we're including those in this particular write-up because they're really relevant and they're places that a lot of people think about when they want to go to Mexico. Yeah. So uh, those six or those eight places are, we're going in geographical order from west to east. Number one. Number one, Cabo, Cabo area. Number two, Ajajic out of Guadalajara. Number three, uh, Guanajuato. Guanajuato, great little town. And then moving south from there to San Miguel de Allende and then Mexico City. And then to Oaxaca, and then moving uh, further east to Acumal, Acumal, and then ending up in Cancun. Cancun. So we're going to talk about all those places. Give us a thumbs up and a like, and subscribe as we share this information for you, because we know a lot of you are either thinking about vacationing, living short-term or long-term in Mexico, or moving permanently to Mexico. So we hope this information will give you a little highlight into kind of the flavors of the particular towns and why you might want to go or not go there. So first up was Cabo. So we um, actually visited Cabo a couple years ago during the Christmas time. And we went to Cabo San Lucas and enjoyed it for a week on vacation. What did you think? Yeah, well, I love Cabo because it is a great uh, touristy vacation spot. I mean, it's lots of stuff to do. You know, you enjoy the beach and uh, the boating and whales and you know lots of interesting people there um but it's very touristy and very I think expensive. It's expensive so yeah. what do you think um i think cabo san lucas is not some place i'd want to live definitely a great place for vacation for family and like you said lots to do going up the coast from there to san jose del cabo maybe a much more friendlier place to live and even going all the way up to la paz I think possibly living on the Baja would be very interesting, and there's a lot of really cool cities, Todos Santos included, would be interesting places to consider to live. The problem with living on the Baja is you're all the way west, and you either need to go all the way up to San Diego or all the way east in order to get out of Mexico. So it is a little bit remote and can be expensive because it's so remote. Yeah, I agree. Baja is a great peninsula. The weather's fantastic. Uh, but it's, 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 you feel like you're out of the way. You feel like it's, it's hard to get there and it's, it's hard to, to get out. So next step, moving from there, moving east to Ajajic, which is the area, uh, it's a city along Lake Chapala, just outside of Guadalajara. We skipped a couple. We said, oh, we did. We're going to go back to Puerto Vallarta in just a minute. <laughs> Let's finish up with Ajajic. Sorry about that. Um, we lived in Ajajic for three weeks and lived there, actually. We lived in a house, we went to the grocery store, we walked dogs, we went to an assisted living facility. I'll put a video up to that. And uh, got to know some of the locals and bike road and just really, really liked Ajajic. Um, what do you think? Would you live there or visit there? It's a great community. There are uh, tons of, of expats there. So if you're, you know, American, Canadian, and you want to be around American and, Americans and Canadians, this is the place for you. Uh, it's kind of like a just described as like a retirement community. So someone uh, said it was the 50, a great neighborhood for 55 plus. Yeah, yeah. But uh, great food if you're a foodie. It's it's uh, close to Guadalajara, so it, it's really easy to get to. Um, the weather is perfect. It's fantastic. I, the first day I was like, I feel like I'm in San Diego. I'm looking up at the hills. I'm looking out at the water. So um, really, a really great community. And there's other more traditional Mexican communities around it, like Chapala. It's on Lake Chapala. And there's a town of Chapala, which is right next door, uh, which, which if you're looking for um, less uh, expats and more uh, of feeling like a traditional Mexican town, uh, you, you can get, have that too. And with Guadalajara being so close by, only half an hour away, you have a great international airport. 
So, Ahaheek was high on our list of places to live, but not on our list of places to visit for a vacation. Uh, it could get pretty boring pretty quickly if you're looking for vacation-y type things to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going backwards, sorry about my geography. Um, let's go back to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, we're at Puerto Vallarta on the West Coast. It's been a, you know, a classic vacation spot in Mexico for the last, I don't know, 50 years. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it has, uh, you know, continued to change with the times, although it still has a lot of flavor. If you want to say, you know, I want to go back to what it was like in Mexico 40 years ago, you've got that as well. So a great historic town and you're right on the beach. There's mountains, there's, there's great hiking if you want to do that kind of thing. Um, and um, yeah, it's, I, I like um, it. It's also got a super airport, a really affordable airport that a lot of the cheaper airlines fly in and out of. There's also great transportation, great affordable transportation within the city. You can get on the bus for 10 pesos, um, great medical care, all types of variety of housing, um, either on the beach or in the mountains or overlooking the water or whatever and quite a good mix of expats and local Mexicans interacting with each other. I like Puerto Vallarta particularly because its, it's city charter says you have to be nice to the tourist. So <laughs> I think that made us feel uh, very comfortable being in Puerto Vallarta. And I would not only consider vacationing there, but also living there. How about you? Yeah, I think so too. I think it, it is definitely a, a touristy town. There's definitely the, the parts of that. The, um, you know, the Malacan and the Romantic Zone. I mean, the things that you hear about, about Puerto Vallarta, uh, um, you know, being a touristy area, but there, there's also places that I could live in, or maybe have a second home or something there and really spend a considerable amount of time there. So next up was Guanajuato, um, which is in the mountains north of Mexico City. It used to be a silver town with lots of tunnels and lots of money, old money, left in Guanajuato. We kind of felt like we were actually in Spain or Italy walking through Guanajuato because a lot of the car traffic is underground in Guanajuato going through the old tunnels from the mining industry. Very beautiful colonial center, lots of money, like several theaters, lots of restaurants, great walking, great hiking. Um, what else about Guanajuato? Yeah, I, I enjoyed the food there. It was, seemed like a really nice community. The weather was great. Um, I think year round, it's got fit, fabulous weather uh, in the area. Um, it, it felt it felt very comfortable. It very it just feels like a great place that I I want to go back. I want to go back there and spend more time there. And yeah, I definitely feel like like that's some place that I could live. And another good airport, the Leon Airport, not as great as the Puerto Vallarta Airport, but there's a huge GM plant there, so it really caters to the international uh, manufacturing industries, so lots of people coming in and out and easy to get in and out of. Um, we were only in Guanajuato for a weekend, so our viewpoint is a little bit uh, abbreviated, but we definitely want to go back, and if we wanted to live in the mountains, I think Guanajuato would be on the list to consider for long time living in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which uh, brings us to the next door neighbor of uh, San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel de Allende. So we're, we're going to tread lightly here because we have a lot <laughs> of friends who really like San Miguel. I like it. I like it too. I enjoy it. It's it, it's it's um it's high class. I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's kind of it seems kind of trendy and. And fun, uh, if you're a foodie, the fabulous restaurants there. It's very um, pretty. It's a beautiful city, great weather, um, lovely people. I remember the, you know, the first night we went into the, uh, to the town center, and although there, were, there was like 75 weddings going on for some <laughs> reason, one right after the other at the churches that, that are around the town center, but it seemed like everybody was just dressed really nicely. It seemed like it definitely feel like a, you know, like a European, uh, town, city, um, the way, you know, just everybody seemed like really like fancied up. Well, Steve and I kind of disagree a little bit about San Miguel, where Steve says it's high class, I should say it's poshy and snooty, um, a little pretentious. It is nice and it is pretty and there is good food and um, it's not as affordable as some other places in Mexico. It's in the mountains. If we wanted, it's definitely a place to visit. A lot of Mexicans go there for vacation. A lot of Mexicans have second homes there. A lot of Americans and expats as well. And um, for me, I would probably go visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. How about you? Okay. 
Well, he wants to live with me, but I think if he didn't want to live with me, he might say he'd want to live there. I'd love to go back and, and visit more and, uh, and spend some more, some more time there. Really enjoy my visit there. How politically correct of my wonderful husband. Okay, next up, Mexico City. Oh, Mexico City is a fabulous city. 22 million people live there. It's easy to get in and out of. Uh, lots of cheap flights. A great location, thousands of things to do, wonderful location. I think what is key to understanding Mexico City is even though it's a city of 22 million, it's actually a city of a million little pueblos. So each little neighborhood has its own personality. A lot of expats and Americans know Condesa, Norte, uh, Roma Norte, Hipodroma, um, which are all nice areas. Uh, I think another place to consider is, uh, is um, where did we stay? Kaiwakan. <laughs> Kaiwakan. Um, but Mexico City is just made up of a ton of little neighborhoods. You could spend your lifetime exploring all the different neighborhoods and never get to know all of Mexico City. I love Mexico City, but for me, the biggest drawback is its dirty, 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 dirty air. It, the air, the API index on uh, air pollution is off the charts. It competes with Beijing a lot of days. And I just, although I love Mexico City, I couldn't live there. Um, I, I will agree with that. Uh, beautiful city, big, lots of things to do. Um, just you could just every day, just you know, be doing something different and, and enjoying yourself and having a great time. Great people, really love the people there. It's big, but it seems fairly easy to get around and just you know, example, and affordable. Affordable, you know, an Uber ride from one side of town to the other was like six dollars, and so. Uh, it's definitely an affordable place, you know, again, the cultures and great food. And, and we'll, food. Put a, we'll put a video up too. here of all the things we did in Mexico City. Um, but, the, you know, the big downside is the is the air quality. So fix that, Mexico. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, next up, Oaxaca. Now, again, we didn't go on this particular trip. I've been to Oaxaca three or four times. You've been once or twice. Uh, we love Oaxaca. It is a beautiful town, culturally rich. Food is off the chart. I think it's got the best food in Mexico. Um, it's a pretty city. It's not the prettiest city. It's not pretty like San Miguel, but it is pretty like Guanajuato. And the people are just very warm. They're very authentic. There are so many things to do. There's excellent hiking in Oaxaca. It's very affordable in Oaxaca. For me, again, if I wanted to live in the mountains, it would be on my list there with Guanajuato. The airport is not as great as some other airports. It's still accessible though. And um, what Oaxaca has going for it, it's not that far from the beach actually. It's only a, it's a quick, <laughs> it's a quick 15 minute flight on a little tiny plane <laughs> or, or, or they are putting in, yeah, or they are putting in, I, I think it's completed a, an expressway to the beach. So that, I think that's, I think that's improved. What yeah, about you, yeah. Oaxaca? Would you live, live no, or visit? I've, I've been there, you know, during the day of the dead celebration, which is incredible. If you've never seen it and never been there for that, that's one thing to definitely to go for. Um, so when I've been there, there is, there's been a lot of tourists and, and just a lot of activity and, and they know how to throw a party. It is just, it is amazing. Um, but, uh, so, you know, I want to be able to go back, but I, I guess I, I do know from, you know, from, especially from you that, you know, it's just a great town. It's just a great city and there's a lot to do. I love the art, uh, scene, uh, in, um, Oaxaca and there's just the food and the, the people. It's just a great place. So of the mountain towns, Ahahik, Guanajuato, San Miguel, and Oaxaca, um, I think I would live in Ahahik, visit Oaxaca, and then like a long term, like a month in Oaxaca, and then maybe a long weekend in Guanajuato and a week in San Miguel. How's that? A day in, a day in San Miguel. No. <laughs> a weekend in San Miguel. Okay, you give it a whole weekend, okay. And, yeah, okay, anyway, the point being that uh, we don't, I, I personally, I think Steve's with me, hopefully. Are you, honey? Um, we don't wanna live in mountain towns, but if, yeah. uh, if we did, Oaxaca and Guanajuato would probably be higher up there than San Miguel. I don't know. I love the mountains. Okay. I don't live in the mountains. All right. Well, there's a man ready to live in the mountains. I guess we should move to Denver. What do you think? Denver. It's Denver <laughs> okay. Moving on. We have two more to go. Uh, Akamal and Cancun. They're both in the Yucatan. Akamal is just south of Cancun, about an hour halfway between uh, Cancun and, Tum and Tulum. Um, it's a little tiny. The town of Akamal is about this big, and we'll put a video up here. It's got six dogs and 
seven restaurants, seven puestos, and that's about it. But surrounding Akamal are all of these resorts and variations of resorts. So timeshares, condos, resort properties, beachfront properties, and so on. So you basically leave the Cancun airport and you drive to Tulum, you go through Akamal, and there's all these resorts on both sides of the road. That's Akamal. So they had a mailing address of Akamal. Um, we stayed in one of those areas in a condo, um, kind of in the jungle along the beach. It was, I would say it was one of the prettiest places we stayed. Um, somewhat affordable. The, uh, the, there is no public transit to speak of in Akamal, so you have to have a car in order to get around. Um, and I don't know what else you want. Oh, and the yeah. scuba diving or the snorkeling is fantastic and hiking in the jungles and the wildlife is amazing. Yeah, so this is a place where, you know, it, it's, you're in the jungle, so, but you're on the beach. So the beach is beautiful. You know, you're in kind of this gated community in this condo. So it, it was, you know, extremely safe, uh, you know, kind of an environment. Um, even though we're in the jungle, we, you know, we saw wild monkeys going across the trees and, and incredible birds and wildlife and, and um, the lizards, what were the big, what are the big? I don't big, remember the things that those is anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but, you know, you know, so the Yucatan is, is you know, it's, it's, it's like Florida. It's like, it's hotter than Florida. It's like, you know, it's, it's uh, humid and sweaty and jungly buggy. and buggy and, uh, um, but it was very nice. And the, the snorkeling was fantastic in Akamal, probably yeah. the best snorkeling um, I've ever And the cenotes are unbelievable. Cenotes yeah, are right, underwater, so much fun. freshwater uh, ponds and access points uh, to get into the aquifer. Yeah. Amazing. At Akamal also has going for it that it's easy to fly into Cancun. Um, the We'll talk about the Cancun taxi mafia in just a minute, but the airport is cheap to get in and out of. Um, near Akumal, of course, is Tulum, which is fantastic, and also Playa del Carmen. We spent a couple days in Playa del Carmen. Um, don't really have much to say, yay or nay, about it because we just had like it's two lunches Cancun, or whatever. So. Yeah, so we'll we'll pass on making judgment on Playa del Carmen. But uh, would you live or visit Akumal? I think Akamal is, uh, the area is a little bit too small, a little bit too uh, secluded for me. It's suburban um, for me. And suburban, but if I'm, if I'm looking for a place in a gated community, close to the beach, uh, in the jungle, um, that's, <laughs> that's that's it. So, and, and it's affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you would, li would you live or visit? I think it's a great place to visit. Yeah. Great place to spend a little time and visit. Or maybe do a short term, it. like a couple months or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially if you snorkel or, or scuba dive. Do, or if you're a water person that like, likes to swim in the water, definitely want to spend more time in Akamal. Where else can you swim? Um, space. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, or maybe least, <laughs> is Cancun. So uh, I have some strong opinions about Cancun. Uh, we, so we, <laughs> chill, slow yeah. down, Chris. We stayed in Cancun for a month and we were in the central area across from the mall, which was a great location for the city of, of Cancun. Um, we had to use public transit, which the public transit was okay. It wasn't very convenient, but it, you, you could get out to the beach if you wanted to. And um, that's about the only thing I'm gonna say about Cancun positive. Yeah, so if it's a great place if you want to if you want to spend money and go to the beach. And you want a vacation? A fabulous, Cancun is fabulous. You want to enjoy a fabulous beach? Um, you know, there's been some uh, news uh, uh, late about maybe it's not the safest place to go. We didn't find that. We found it to be very safe. We found people to be very nice. Well, we found it safe because, and I'm going to just do a video up here. Uh, there were a lot of cops and a lot of armor everywhere. I personally, you'll see in the video that we talk about, we're split on this decision. I think when there's lots of cops around, you might be a target. Steve feels like when there's lots of cops around, it's safer. So anyway... Uh, the beaches are pretty. If you definitely want a week on the beach in the sand with beautiful water and good food, Cancun is definitely a great place to go. It is probably one of the more expensive places in Mexico to be on the beach. Um, the taxi mafia is crazy. You cannot leave the airport for less than 50 bucks or so. Um, it's, it's impossible to get out of the airport uh, with any sort of public transit. And well, you can take the ADO bus and it's like $12 or something to go into town. It's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you, you, ridiculous amounts to go two miles or three miles. Yeah, it's you just, definitely need, need to be creative with regards to transportation. And it's, it's a big city. So, 
the city is, is large, and to get out to the beach, it's it's, it's even farther. Mm -hmm. the, the, the you know the causeway to get out to the beach is is pretty long. It's pretty extensive. So um, so yeah, the, uh, the the taxis um, the taxis make good money there. <laughs> and one and of the benefits. Get, that, I'm sorry. You can't get an Uber, so Uber's yeah, not Yeah, Uber's out. not out. Well, they're there, but they're kind of catch sketchy on whether they'll pick you up or not, and it's still kind of yeah. sketchy. Um, one of the advantages, I will say, about Cancun is there's a lot of things to do from Cancun. You can go out to the, there's four or five different ruins you can go to. You can go to the Snotage, you can go up to Holbox. You can go out to several different islands. If you're a deep sea fisher or like any sort of fishing, water activities, skiing, water skiing, boat activities, whatever, Cancun is a great place to do those from. So I will say that positive about Cancun. So would you live or visit in Cancun? Um, we'll leave that for other people. I think I'll, I'll pass on Cancun. <laughs> I would visit if I wanted to go and sit on the beach with my family or friends. I would not live there. All right. Okay. So that's um, our summary of Mexico. Please ask us questions. We have been to other places in Mexico, but maybe not extensively, or do we have strong opinions about them? But please feel free to ask, what is your favorite place to visit in Mexico? Or what is your favorite place that you're thinking about living in Mexico?